Michael Watts here, and I'm here with my dear friend Rory Dowling. It's a year since the uh, very first episode of Luthier Stories came out, and um, a lot's happened. A lot's happened. <laughs> <laughs> he texted the other day ago, and I was like, no way. Yeah, it's, Lies. it's been literally, to, uh, it's, a, it's a year to the day. Yeah. And um, one of the things that's happened uh, involves this gentleman. Here we go. Mr. Martin Simpson, um, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most uh, influential uh, musicians, let alone guitarists, uh, that the UK has ever produced. And, um, well, you tell us that story, Rory. Uh, well, where to start? I mean, this, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been working with Martin's been ongoing now for the last three years, mm -hmm. four years, long time. Wow. And uh, it all kind of started off, I went, he invited me down to visit him and I took a guitar that I'd worked on and we liked it, but there mm -hmm. was a, it was clear that there was some, you know, we just, it was just the start of something. Sure. Sort of big. So, um, yeah, I uh, listened to him and we, yeah, we basically kind of came up with this idea using uh, Martin Trebolo, uh, mm. 18, uh, it was 1934-37, this unbelievable guitar. So um, we kind of used that as a kind of baseline, we were like, oh, sure. what can we do with this? There's, there was, I mean, those instruments, as you know, are off the chart. Absolutely. Yeah. But there were elements that we liked, you know, we liked the spit, you know, mm. the kind of presence and the p controllable power at the front of the note. Um, and we also liked the kind of a bit of compression in it. Um, mm. So, but there was a lot that we kind of not saying it bad again, but we wanted more like of the kind of modern Luthery involved sure. in that sound. Yeah. So, yeah, I get that. So I went away and I was like, I'm going to recreate the modern sound. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happened. That's then. just not what happened at all. So, <laughs> so what did happen? Because I'm I'm holding the results right here. Yeah. Why, why don't you walk us through it? So basically, we came up. Well, yeah. Um, through a lot of listening, not a huge amount of discussion. There was no kind of brief set, mm -hmm. um, but we kind of started looking at the body shape first of all. Right. Took the treble and I combined it with my Chigger Beg model, which is my sure. kind of accompaniment uh, instrument, and pulled it up to the 12th fret. Mm -hmm. um, opened up the waist on it and increased the depth. That was the first thing we did. Right. And yeah. on the first one, I kind of built very light. Um, and uh, it didn't. It, it worked really well. It was a great instrument, but it didn't kind of go down the avenue that we wanted it to go down. Right. So we needed a kind of richer, fuller uh, sound from the instrument. Um, In fact, I think that guitar may have been hanging up on the wall when I visited you the first time. Wasn't uh, it? The first time. It's one that you'd sent down to uh, to Martin, but it didn't have a cutaway. Yes. Yes. Right. Totally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So well minded. Bloody hell. Wow. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I mean, it was a great, cause it's like a really light, really mm. lively finger picker. And Malcolm Middleton from Arab Strap, he plays that guitar now. He's really? just done his recent album, nice. uh, Bananas, on it, and it's fantastic. You should plug for uh, Malcolm, you should have that album, it's fantastic. Um, so, uh, but so that guitar, great, and it was a really solid kind of starting point. Mm. So, um, I then built a um. It was Tasmanian Blackwood right. guitar, but I so I used the shape, and it's kind of maybe what I should have done in the first place. I used my kind of basic building principles, same curves, same back profile, everything the same, but built it with Tasmanian Blackwood just to test the shape. Mm -hmm. uh, and I took that guitar to the Holy Grail, um, and it went down very very well. Um, so, but anyway. What we kind of got to was a kind of bit of a juxtaposition. I needed it to move in a direction that I'd never kind of gone in before. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So thankfully, uh, Berlin kind of came about when it did, and I was kind of filled with inspiration after mm -hmm. that show. It was incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, started thinking about new things and new ideas and things to play with. Um, and I suppose the biggest kind of development on this guitar is the compression braces. Uh, on the back of the guitar. Yes, tell me about that. So they are basically uh, my the back of my instruments are uh, cylindrical. They're not mm. domed, and um, I wanted the back of the instrument to be more lively, have more of an impact on the sound of the guitar, mm. rather than the the really forward projection that I get on my uh, kind of standard uh, mm -hmm. profiled uh, cylindrical back. So 
to do that I needed to make the back more lively um, and the only way to do that is to get rid of the mass on the back but Absolutely. I needed to keep the shape so I was looking at uh, bows and arrows <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, that was the that was the first thing that came into yeah. uh, came to my mind was was archery. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So because I was thinking, what is that shape, and mm. what holds that shape? Well, it's a bow and arrow, you know. So that's where the principle came from, and I tested it, and um, yeah, it worked. Um, it, well, it worked in as much that it held the shape, mm. and the back was clearly more lively. You know, it, you could feel the whole instrument going. Sure. Um, so, and the first one that I tried actually went down to Martin. Um, so we had the um, uh, we had the compression braces. Uh, I used the Paduke neck on that. It had a mm. new uh, neck joint because uh, yeah. I was kind of I wanted more energy transfer Absolutely. than I had before. Yeah. Um, so and. Um, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, so all of the development bracing that we'd done on the very first one, we basically re-looked at the curves and used that bracing pan and came up with what he now has, So, which awesome. is uh, Tasmanian Blackwood um, and a Paduke neck with a bear, uh, yeah, bear claw Swiss spruce top. Nice. So, and that's his, that's his. So, but from there, <laughs> kind of gone right okay what's next what's where next? are we what yeah, are we absolutely. after absolutely because that was always the thing with martin there was no mm -hmm. kind of like there's no end point to this right, you know? yeah, yeah. so now i'm you know i want to send him another guitar and see what he thinks of it you know, <laughs> let's go, you know keep moving and keep because you get on a kind of road like this instrument and it opens up so many avenues mm -hmm. in your building so yeah um so this guitar is basically the latest kind of development of that instrument um, it's a, I would say it doesn't. I wanted it. I wanted to explore it being a little bit softer. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, Martin's it's got a huge amount of spit. It's a very very direct instrument, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. Um, it's what he's used to. It's what he's used to, indeed. So, but I wanted to pull it the other way to see what happened with the compression braces and all the rest of it. So I put mahogany neck on it. Mm -hmm. um, this has, it's actually got an Adirondack top. Um, really? But what I've done with it is I've actually lowered the string height relative to the soundboard a little bit. Uh, when you, as you know, if you, it's the higher the strings are off the soundboard, the more attack, more spit the instrument mm. has, the lower the mellow it is. So just kind of softening it all. Um, and but the biggest change in this instrument is the side construction. Okay. So what's happening there? Basically, there's a guy called Dion James. Hi, Dion. He oh, well, allowed. Yeah. Well, I I got in touch with him, and the guy I believe that taught him um, used this side construction. It's basically a kerf side all the way through, so the kerfings go from f front to back, wow. all the way around the instrument, and then yeah. it's laminated to the outside. In this case, Malaysian blackwood. Uh, mm -hmm. And then on the inside of that, there is a, a constructional veneer. So it's very, very light okay. because it's ultimately air. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Uh, it's stiff. I've done uh, no max in my sides before. That was my next really question. Yeah, yeah so was, you can see me back. itching. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> so, <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah, and the, it, it kind of, um, the no max, it worked really well. It was mm. wonderful. But what I kind of... It, it didn't cover enough bases for me in terms sure. of the, uh, the kind of gluing surfaces and uh, the physical things anyway. So mm -hmm. this is what we've got. We'll wow. see what you think. Right, well, um, I'm going to put this wonderful instrument to its paces. Thank you very much, Rory. Yeah, nice, Let's uh, shift some mics around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Rory. It's uh, it's a beautiful instrument, and um, yeah, see you later. <laughs>